acknowledge that a lack of prayer is ungodly. Psalm chapter 79 verse 6 says this, Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on kingdoms that do not call upon your name. So there in the book of Psalms, we see that wrath came upon those nations who just simply refused to call upon God. By refusing to call upon the Lord, by refusing to seek his guidance, by refusing to acknowledge his presence, we are inviting the wrath of God upon our lives. And in the case of the believer, that wrath comes in the form of correction because he loves us and he chastises those whom he loves. If you lack prayer, your life will be filled with chaos, period. Even if you're a born again believer, why? Because you're not making use of those things that God has given to you. You're not making use of that inheritance that is yours through Christ Jesus. Look, you know, that as a born again believer, you have the Holy Spirit, you have power, you have the love of God, you have peace and joy deep within your spirit. But if you're not committing to prayer, then you are not making use of what God has given to you. Psalm 53, four says this, will those who do evil never learn? They eat up my people like bread and wouldn't think of praying to God. Here we see in the scripture that ungodly people don't even have that in their mind. It's in their nature to ignore the presence of God. Don't be like the unbeliever. Don't ignore the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't ignore that connection with God that you have 24 seven. Acknowledge that a lack of prayer is ungodly. Prayerlessness as a lifestyle is ungodliness as a lifestyle. Jeremiah 10, 21 says, the shepherds of my people have lost their senses. They no longer seek wisdom from the Lord. Therefore, they fail completely and their flocks are scattered. Zephaniah 3, 1 through 2, what sorrow awaits rebellious, polluted Jerusalem, the city of violence and crime? No one can tell it anything. It refuses all correction. It does not trust in the Lord or draw near to its God. So here the Lord is rebuking this nation because they refuse to draw near to him. James 4, 2 puts it this way. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. We have to acknowledge the serious nature of prayerlessness. We can't be so dismissive about the fact that we're not seeking the face of God daily. Look, I understand that the presence of the Holy Spirit dwells in the believer 24 seven. I understand that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but prayer is about submission to God. Prayer is about aligning with his will. Prayer is about making use of those things that he's deposited into your life. Prayer is about doing and becoming all that God desires. Prayer is about doing and becoming what pleases the heavenly father. So if you are not praying as a born again believer, you are lacking seriously in your spiritual life. Now, this is not a message of condemnation. This is though a message of correction because I think that we can become so passive in our lives about spiritual matters and we even somewhat joke about it. We kind of laugh it off. We say things like, well, you know, God's been dealing with me or, you know, I really should pray more often or, you know, I really should pray more consistently or, gee, I missed several weeks of prayer. I got to get back on that. We treat it like it's a diet that we're not doing well in when in fact it's the very essence of spirituality. It's to enjoy the presence of God. It's to commune with the Holy Spirit. It's to receive revelation of the word. It's to be empowered with boldness and faith and joy and peace. It's to help you focus. It's to help you receive guidance. It is the manner in which we walk with the Holy Spirit. That's prayer. Now you can pray by going away privately to a room that's secluded prayer, that's intentional prayer, that's structured prayer, but then there's spontaneous prayer. This is to speak to the Lord all throughout the day, to acknowledge his presence in every moment of every day, to acknowledge his presence in the car, at work, at school, wherever you are, when you wake up, when you go to bed. So both structured prayer, scheduled prayer, and spontaneous prayer are needed, but whatever you do, please, believer, pray. The proof that you believe in prayer is that you pray. We don't pray because we're self-reliant. 
We say to the Lord things like, well, Lord, I don't really need you. And you might say, when did I say that? You say it every time you start your day without prayer. Whatever you don't pray about, you're telling God, I don't need your help in. Whatever you don't pray about, you're telling God, I don't want you involved. Prayerlessness is self-reliance. Many times we also don't pray because of sin. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And other times we pray because of unbelief, because we don't think it will work, because deep down inside we're telling ourselves, why pray if nothing's ever gonna change? And all of these things have to be dealt with, but at its root, we have to acknowledge that prayerlessness for whatever reason and however often it manifests is ungodly. That's number one, we have to acknowledge that. We can't be dismissive. We can't treat it like, oh, it's just a goal I didn't meet, or it's just a good idea that I didn't actually take action upon. No, prayer is vital to the life of the believer. Number two, acknowledge your need for the Lord's daily guidance. Psalm 86, one says, bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me for I need your help. Look, I understand that we don't just approach the Lord to receive from him. We approach the Lord because we're receiving of him. I also understand that we don't approach God to be connected with him. We pray because we are connected with him. So I don't want you to think that I'm placing legalism upon you with these teachings. No, we understand the connection is there. God already loves us. We have all things in the spirit. But when you pray, you're acknowledging your need for him. You, you are depending upon him consistently. Prayer is the act of dependency upon God. I mentioned a moment ago how every time we go a day without prayer, we're basically saying to the Lord, I don't need you today. If you go a week without prayer, you're saying to the Lord, I don't need you this week. If you live a lifestyle without prayer, you're saying, Lord, I can live in my own strength and you are self-reliant. Maybe that's the way you were taught to be. Maybe at a young age, you had to take up responsibilities that most kids don't have to take up. Maybe you've had to learn to be tough and self-reliant and strong on your own. But as believers, we must set aside old mindsets. We must set aside thought patterns that come from the way that we were raised or the culture in which we were raised. And instead, we must embrace the realities of scripture recognizing that we are new creations now taking on new mindsets. And this new mindset involves the idea, the knowledge that I need him. He, he, he's, he's the breath of life. He's the sustainer of all things spiritual in my being. He's the giver of joy. He's the revealer of truth. He's the giver of discernment. He's the giver of peace. He's the demonstrator of love. How are we to become like Christ if we're not spending time with him? How are we to experience transformation? Yes, the veil has been removed, but are you fixing your eyes on him now that you can see him in the spirit? Are you fixing your eyes on him and being changed, as the scripture says, into his glorious image, reflecting that light, that marvelous light of glory? That's what prayer is. It's depending upon him as you become like him. It's to admit that there are flaws deep within us that we cannot handle on our own. It's to cry out, Lord, change my name. Lord, change my nature. Lord, cause me to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to see your ways. I want to see your face. I want to seek your presence. Draw me closer to your heart that my heart might be more like yours. That is hunger. Far too many believers operate in desperation when they should be operating in hunger. Now, many won't like the way I just said that, but hear me out. Desperation is a great initiator, but it's a terrible sustainer. You say, Brother David, I thought we're supposed to be desperate for God. Yes, that's why I said it's a great initiator, but you can only be desperate for what you don't have. Desperation comes when there's calamity all around. Desperation comes when there's lack. I'll put it this way. The difference between desperation and desire is the difference between starvation and hunger. Well, if you're eating daily properly, you'll be hungry for the next meal, but you won't be starving for it. 
In the same way, if you're spending time with the Lord daily, you're operating from a place of desire. You want him. You know you want his presence. You know you need his presence. But if you are lacking in prayer, if you are lacking in devotion to the word, if you are lacking in spending time in his presence, then you become desperate because you put yourself in difficult situations because of the lack of wisdom and the lack of becoming like Christ, the lack of his character, the lack of his power. Not that those things aren't there, but we're not making use of them. So again, the difference between desire and desperation is the difference between hunger and starvation. Hungry for the things of God? Yes. Why? Because I'm eating daily. Starving for the things of God? No. Because if I'm starving, it means I haven't been partaking. It means I've come to a point where I've not been acknowledging that presence. So this is why we have to daily depend upon him, be hungry for the things of God, daily go before the Lord, recognizing I'm broken without you. I'm a mess without you. I'm a wreck without you. I often tell people that if it wasn't for the presence of the Holy Spirit, I would be a thousand pieces shattered on the floor. His grace is the glue that holds me together in my brokenness. And only in prayer do I find that sustaining strength. Only in prayer do I sense that wind at my back, that, that, that inner strength and confidence in who I am in Christ comes by the Holy Spirit through prayer. So that's number two. You have to acknowledge your need for the Lord's daily guidance. And too often we just dismiss this idea. Oh, I can handle it. I'm doing just fine. Well, things aren't really that bad, especially, please hear me now, especially those in ministry. You become so busy with the ministry itself that you fail in the area of prayer. And so now the busyness of ministry has replaced time with them. I'd rather spend time with him than do things for him. Because if you're doing things for him without spending time with him, the pressures of ministry will destroy you. They'll cause doubt and fear and anxiety and a lack of peace and so forth. So number one, acknowledge that a lack of prayer is ungodly. Number two, acknowledge your need for the Lord's daily guidance. Write that in the comments section right now. Just say, I need you, Lord. Write it in the comments right now. Publicly declare that whether you're watching live or on replay. I need you, Lord. Acknowledge your need for his presence. Acknowledge your dependency upon him. Acknowledge your desire for who he is. Father, I thank you that you are rekindling the fires of prayer. I thank you that you've placed a spirit of prayer and supplication upon us. Cause us, Holy Spirit, to cry out, Abba, Father. Give us a greater hunger for the deeper things of God. Help us to be attentive when you're inviting us to the places of prayer. Take us to higher heights and deeper depths, I pray. And Lord, bring healing and deliverance to your people in the mighty name of Jesus as your power flows now. Come on, just lift your hands, receive that. Father, touch your people. I rebuke sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke every demonic attack in the mighty name of Jesus. Just receive it. Take a moment. Just receive that now. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Type amen. Well, if you enjoyed this message, you think others can benefit from this, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Also, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you can receive more teachings on the Holy Spirit, prayer, spiritual warfare, and other topics. We also live stream events around the world where you'll see the power of the Holy Spirit in action. At those live events, you'll, pe you'll see people saved, healed, delivered, and empowered. And now I wanna ask you to do something. Consider today helping this ministry on its mission. Look, we all understand that Jesus is still the answer and the gospel still has power. That's what the world needs. And if you're like me, you have a heart for souls. You love seeing people come into the kingdom. You love seeing the kingdom of God expand. You desire to see more believers empowered in their gifts and their ministries. You desire to see the darkness dissolve, that darkness that envelops the world. And you wanna see the gospel of Jesus Christ go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we're on the same team. Go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a single gift to become a monthly supporter Come on, some of us have 
streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney, maybe a gaming service, maybe a gym membership. We have memberships for everything these days. Why not add to that your support of the gospel? Everything counts one time or monthly, large or small. There's no gift so small that it doesn't count. No gift so large that we won't know what to do with. Give today for the sake of souls. And that is it for now. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God.